Hey, welcome to my channel, A Touch of Flourish. I'm Catherine Ball, and today we're gonna to be talking about grief, and specifically how we give our grief to God. I wanna talk about the process that I go through with God, how I give my grief to God, because I feel like while this isn't the only way to move through grief, it certainly isn't, so please don't, don't you know, receive what I'm saying as I'm saying this is the only way, but this is, the way that I've been able to move through really, really difficult things, come out on the other side and really live out the scriptures that talk about you have sorrow in the evening, but joy comes in the morning. It reminds me of when Jesus says, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. For me, I've lived this out, and it's a very simple process, but it requires faith. It requires an ear to hear the Holy Spirit and eyes to see the Holy Spirit. You've got to be able to discern what God is saying and develop your ear to be sensitive and develop your spirit to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And listen, you can start at any stage in the game. You know, if you just became a Christian or if you've been a Christian for all of your life, this is not something that is like, oh, this is an intermediate. No, you can begin to do this at any part, in any stage, in any season of your life. When I talk about grief, I'm talking about a response to a massive loss in your life. And that could be a myriad of things. It could be maybe you have broken relationships with your family and you grieve what you wish could be. Maybe you grieve the loss of a loved one. I know often that's, that's what we associate grief with. Um, but there are many different types of grief. Maybe you sat with somebody who was dying for six months and that's, you had a whole that's anticipatory grief and you were going through that, but then when they pass away, that opens up a whole new door of grief. And grief is very complex. A lot of us have heard about the stages of grief, shock, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, testing, and acceptance. And they don't come in that order. And often grief will come in waves. Um, sometimes it is, it will crush you and then later on down the line it'll come in big waves small waves little things you don't expect it it's not something that you can actually um say oh i know i'm gonna this is gonna cause me to sometimes you can and sometimes you can't like sometimes it genuinely comes out of nowhere and i've learned to not fight it to really feel what's going on, allow myself to feel it, acknowledge my emotions and feelings, but I will go through a process with God. And so let me just break down how I do that. It's really not complicated. Um, for me, I think the most recent thing that we've gone through is the loss of our son. I was six months pregnant and he passed away unexpectedly. We don't know why his heart just stopped. And we've done, you know, all the tests that you can find and we just, don't, we don't know. We don't have any answers. Only God knows that answer. So we've gone through a process and that's, you know, almost six months now. Um, and I will say that initially, really there was nothing that anybody could say. There's no amount of scripture you can throw at that. There's no um, words of wisdom that help. And I feel like that's the one thing that we've been very blessed with pastors and elders and friends and you know that they understand that there's really nothing clever to say to the loss of a child to the loss of a baby you just can't you just need to be there for them key thing that i think truly saved me in all of this was when we came home from the hospital um i still i had the flu through all of that i had the flu when i got admitted into the hospital that day and I had the flu when we got home. And it was the most severe flu I've ever had in my life. I mean, it was probably a good thing I was being monitored in the hospital. But it had, I had such a haze that I, I couldn't really get a grasp. It was just like, I can't believe that just happened. You know, so trying to process everything. And I had a moment where I was just like, well, I know that 
four weeks before I was pregnant with Levi, my mentor and her husband had prayed for my womb to open, had heard the promises of children, which confirm what we've heard. Um, you know, it, it was incredible that this child coming has a Samuel anointing. And so when I was pregnant four weeks later, we were like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, like, this is wild. And it was exciting. And so when all this happened, it was like, wow, like, so I just can't like, at this point, can I even trust what you're saying, God? Like, is this, what is happening? What? So, I mean, I was, the wheels were starting to turn. And what was really happening was I was trying to figure it out on my own in the haze. And we're all human. We all, at some point, we're trying to do that. So don't feel bad if you've done that too. It's, it's, it's a human thing. But I had to stop. Cause I knew I was like, I'm going to lose my faith. You know, like if I go down a certain path, like, like I know the enemy wants me to do, I'm just going to straight up lose faith at some point. And so I, I know that God's word does not return void. And I know that just because it looks like the promise is coming to pass doesn't mean it is what's happening. God has a specific reason for how he does things. And when he decides that the promise is going to come to pass, he will see to it that it happens and nobody can tamper with that. And that's the truth. And while I knew those things, I was just like, oh, I'm having such a hard time. So I had to stop and say, God, hold on for a second, God, hold on. I need to stop myself. I mean, I'm getting in my own way. I'm getting in your way. What do you say about this? What do you say? about this because I'm having all these thoughts and I don't know and I just feel like I need to stop and ask you what you're saying the response that I got I logically like if you were to try and say this to me and comfort me with this with the scripture with what God said I would probably want to cuss you out <laughs> I wouldn't but I would want to um, but because God said it God knew exactly what I needed to hear and he said do not lean on your own understanding and I just I was like oh man and as soon as I heard it I received that it's Proverbs 3 um, I honestly was like, oh, and the fog lifted. All of a sudden, I was clear. I was, I'm back. I was in alignment with the Holy Spirit, was in alignment with Jesus, with God. Okay. Thank you, God. And immediately I knew, okay, Levi was not the promised child. Gotcha. The promises still stand. Gotcha. This is part of the battle. Gotcha. And once I received that, it just, I mean, like I say, it was clarity and I, my spirit was renewed, truly. I mean, only God can do that. So as I explain this, just understand that this is not something that um, that you really, when somebody goes through something heavy like that, you inserting scripture and just saying, oh, well, this just talks about grief, so you should, and it's like, hold on for a second. <laughs> you better ask the Holy Spirit about that because it's better if the person themselves goes to God and it says, what do you say about this? I'm telling you, to, to break them out of the fog, out of the pain, out of all of that, and get their spirit in alignment, it doesn't mean that the emotions go away. That's not what that means. However, um, the preceding word of the Lord will break through physical issues, will break through, especially brain fog, not having a clear you know, um, sense of what's going on, um, I was, I mean, most of you guys have had the flu and you understand what I'm saying when I say I was in such a haze 
So on top of all of the trauma of going through labor and all of that, and you know your child has passed away, it's really difficult. But then I also had the flu and it was just like, what is going on? <laughs> that is some straight up warfare, spiritual warfare. Like that is crazy. And um, so only God knew how to speak to me about that. So I went and I read that entire Psalm and all your ways acknowledge him. I mean, it's like, and your path will be made straight. It is just, it's so good. And I, I honestly was so thankful to God for speaking. Because here's the thing, like, I think I had some bitterness that was trying to creep in and that immediately, you know, cast your cares. It, it just confronted any lie that was like trying to get in because I know that whatever God says he's gonna do, he's gonna do it. And I know that it's not always gonna look like what we think it's gonna look like in our head, the picture that we create. So, you know, but you, you, like I said, you need God to speak to it. So the first thing that you wanna do when stuff hits the fan in your life, I mean, this isn't just a grief thing, but grief is so complex and I feel like it's not talked about enough. So we will say in the context of grief, but this is in any context, ask God what he says about it. Ask God what he says. I also do that. I just got through dealing with a interstitial cystitis flare. It's a bladder flare that um, God's going to heal that bladder condition, that bladder syndrome. Um, it, it, but I, it presents like a UTI. And so it's like a week of, of pain. It's intense. It's bad. And I have to ask God every time, what do you say about this? <laughs> you know, um, but he's so good to answer. So whenever something hits the fan, maybe you lose somebody, maybe a, a relationship is lost, maybe your dream is lost of being able to do whatever it is that you always dream that you wanted to do. Maybe you're dealing with a chronic illness and you grieve the life you had or grieve the life you feel you won't ever have. Um, I think those are the times it's crucial to say, hold on God, what do you say about this? Because that is an entry point for us to figure it out on our own. And that's not what God is asking us to do. So number one, ask God, what do you say about this? Next step would be whatever he says, you wanna write it down. If it's a, a scripture reference, go look at the scripture. Sometimes it is just a straight up prophetic word. It's always gonna be based in scripture, of course. Um, but, but write it down so that you will remember because you think you will and you may not. After that initial event, you wanna stay in communication with God. Sometimes it becomes very, very difficult to read the word and that's the truth. And so the whole point would be that you're reading the word when stuff is not hitting the fan and then when you go through a difficult season, you already have the word hidden in your heart so that you can discern the voice of the Lord at all times. It is a little bit harder to try to get in the word when you have everything going on at once. That is the most difficult time because listen, while our soul is going through a process of sanctification, our bodies are not. And so there are times when we have brain fog, we have whatever else going on. And if the Lord doesn't take it, you ask him, God, clear my head. God, give me a rhema word, you know, and that's not cleared away. You know, we pull it under the blood of Jesus that means that he's allowing it. So you also have to discern, okay, so you're allowing this. Like I've, I pull this under the blood of Jesus. I'm praying for if it's healing, if it's God, I'm feeling this pain, you know, open communication with God, talk to him, talk to Jesus like he is right there because he is. So, keep the communication open, but there are gonna be certain things that God may give you breakthrough on, but there are other things that God may not. And the thing is, is that he always knows best. There are things that if he had perfectly healed me from, taken away the grief, boom, you know, not, I didn't have to feel, I didn't have to go through it, I would not have grown spiritually. So God knows best, God always knows better. I would not have chosen to lose three babies, I have to tell you. 
um, I don't really plan on losing any more babies, but God knows best. And it's not that he causes those things. Listen, it's, he's not causing it. Um, but when he allows them to happen, it's never an afterthought. And he is always with you. And the thing about that is, see that little bit of bitterness that will say, well, you're in the room. You're here with me. How could you allow this? You have to deal with that. You have to take that thought captive. You have to. In the name of Jesus, I take that thought captive. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Pull it under the blood. I mean, you go through that process. And I'm, when I'm saying this, I'm not saying this is a, a magic formula. I'm not. But I'm saying if it's intimidating to even pray, if it's intimidating to know how to approach God, I hope that at least talking about this will give you the courage to approach God because through Jesus, we can boldly come before God and ask Him and keep the conversation open, like I say, because you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised how God is going to work it out. And I do believe that scripture, God works all things together for good. So it's, um, it doesn't feel like it in the moment. And that's why you need to ask God what he says about it because he knows what's in your heart. He knows better than you do. I would have never gone to that scripture for me. I would have never gone to Proverbs 3. I don't want to hear that. But when he spoke it to me, it broke through what was going on. It broke me out of the haze and I'm forever grateful. So we need to be careful of roots of bitterness. We need to be careful of these stages of grief really getting a hold of us. What I've come to terms with through most of this, really through, even I would say even before Levi came on the scene, was giving my grief to God gives more space and gave more space to God. The more times that I did it, when I would start to feel, oh my gosh, you know, I'm feeling grief over, you know, a loved one that is going through whatever, or I'm feeling this or that, God, I give this to you. Jesus, I give this to you. That scripture that I read earlier from Matthew, where he's talking about um, his, you know, his yoke is easy and his burden is light, that's real. Like, okay, Jesus, take my grief take my grief god give me joy give me joy and the thing is um you can i mean you could say that I, I know that i've also prayed take the take this weight off me god take this burden off of me and he has it, it's it's phenomenal but the thing about god is that he's never going to overpower you and force you to do that you do have to approach him and ask. And that's where I think a lot of Christians, that they forget to do that step. Maybe the Holy Spirit identifies for them, you're in pain because of this. This is actually where your pain is in this situation. And they go, okay, so my pain is this, got it, okay. And then they, it's, not, it's not like a God take this from me. I don't want this. I can't, I cannot bear the brunt of this loss. You take this, you take it. I give it to you, cast your cares. I cast this to you. So you have to go through a process with God. You do, you have to do that. He's not gonna just, just cause you open up the conversation. It does not mean he's just gonna take everything from you that you need taken. He wants you to invite him in. He wants you to give it to him. And that's basically my process for giving my grief to God. It's based on those scriptures. It's straight up just based on the fact that I was, I know for me, for example, I was never meant to carry all of this pain. I was never meant to do that. And the more I make a point to give my grief to God, the more he trades it, the more Jesus goes, okay, straight up, I'm gonna trade it with you. My burden is light. My yoke is easy. Okay, you feel that? You will feel lighter. You will feel pain. You will cry. You will, you know, express your emotions. You will go through the process. It's not about shoving down emotions. 
okay? You go through this, you say, God, take this from me. This is too much for me in Jesus' name. And then you feel and acknowledge your emotions and feelings. You do, you feel them. I mean, there have been times when I've been like, God, I just feel like I wanna cry, but I can't cry. And I just need you to help me cry and express this and get this out. And like, he's done it. It's, you know, there is nothing that God can't do. And often I feel like we put limitations on God. Oh, well, grief, you know, it is just a part of life, isn't it? You see, there's the truth. But the lie is, well, grief is going to be my best friend. Grief is my friend. It's always there. And there's nothing, God can't heal this. And that's, that's all lies, man. And you might feel that way, but that does not mean that is the truth. So you've got to ask God, first of all, impart the truth to me about this. Nobody is going to be able to speak it to you, quite frankly. You have got to go to God on your own. You have got to go to the Holy Spirit. Now, it doesn't mean you can't ask for help. Am I hearing this right? Hey, pastor, am I hearing this right? This is what I heard from God. Hey, elder so-and-so, I'm hearing this, you know, or maybe you have a mentor. I'm hearing this. What do you say? You always want, this is why it's, it's a key thing to be submitted to your church leaders. And submission, guys, I'm not talking about being in an abusive situation and just letting it go. That is a worldly idea of submission. I'm talking about kingdom submission, kingdom trust, okay? If you can have the spiritual oversight, if God has granted you spiritual oversight, which he gives that to all of us because he's called us to a church, he has assigned us to a church, we don't pick it. God actually has already assigned us to the church we're supposed to be at. We're supposed to function in. Our gifts perfectly fit in. Um, that spiritual oversight will help keep you safe. So you can say, well, God told me that I'm never gonna get healed. Okay, hold on for a second because God's will for all of us is for him to heal us. So let's talk about how you got there. Sometimes we just don't hear it right. And grief is tricky because we can really believe that things will never get better. We can really believe that there's no hope. And hope is not something that we can just force. I think that there's a worldly idea of hope where it's like, you're just optimistic and no, no. Take it from me. <laughs> I, so God has said that I have chronic hope. That does not mean that I'm chronically optimistic. That is not what that means. I know that God will do what he said he will do concerning Jesus, concerning his promises, he's going to do it. So that's the hope. My hope is in Jesus. My hope is in the promises of God. And I don't really want anything in my life that isn't from God, to be honest. So, all right, we've lost three babies. It's devastating. You know, you feel the emotions, you go through it. But then the truth is, I don't want anything that isn't from God. And I know that those children are with Jesus. I know that they're learning from Jesus, they're growing up with the Lord, and they're quite frankly, much better off than I am. Now, it took me a, a while to get there and feel that, but that's, that's, I mean, I rest in that. Like, thank you God that they're, they're okay. They recovered from the start. Um, and they're with Jesus. So it, it's not always um, a clear cut answer like that. Like I know there are loved ones in my family that did not believe in Jesus, or maybe they are part of a cult or whatever else, and they didn't go to heaven. You know, that's, that's, that's rough. <laughs> but the truth is, um, that the love that we had, it didn't just end because they passed away. And so grief can be so overwhelming because you don't know what to do with that extra love. You have to ask God for help. You have to give it to God. So that is really a very simple process. It's a simple process of saying, okay, hold on God, what do you say about this? Write it down, look up the scripture if it's a scripture, you can always check in again with any elder or pastor, overseer, whatever it is, your spiritual oversight. 
um, just in case you, you're not sure. And be specific about taking thoughts captive. Really make a point to intentionally take your thoughts captive. Don't play games with this because losing children, losing loved ones, losing relationships with family, losing dreams, losing, like your mind will race to try to answer the why, the what, the how, the what happens now, the what does this mean now. So you have to take all of those thoughts captive and you have to bring it to God. You have to take it to Jesus. You have to pull it under the blood because if you do not, more often than not, a lie is gonna get in there. And then that's a whole other issue that we will discuss in a different video. <laughs> but this would be a process that you can do really for anything. But God, what do you say? God, I give my grief to you. I give this weight to you. I can't bear this, God. I can't do this. So Jesus, let's, let's go ahead and switch this out. Feel your emotions. Write down, if, if it helps, write down what you're feeling and write down the truth of what God has said. Sometimes we need to see it. So that's also another method. And I know if you have a chronic illness and that illness involves a lot of pain, you do need to write it down. If you have a hard time, I mean, you, pain really warps your mind. I mean, it does. And um, so sometimes you just gotta straight up write that stuff down and that's gonna help you. I wanna encourage you to look up scriptures about grief. I could list off so many of them. There's, there's actually a lot of scriptures about sorrow, grief, mourning in the Bible. It's not something that God shies away from. It's not something that um, it is that Jesus can't touch, can't heal, can't help with. That often we put those limitations on him. And so I just want to help you with the truth and help you walk in the truth to go boldly up to God through Jesus and say, what gives, like, what do you say about this? Take this pain from me, take this from me, God. I, I was never meant to have this on my shoulders. I was never meant to carry this around like a friend. The truth is Jesus is your friend. So I'm not meaning to knock anybody who has said, well, grief is just a friend that, well, I have to tell you something. Grief is not my friend. Grief is allowed to visit. I will feel what I'm gonna feel, but I'm, I'm going to give it to Jesus. Because he said, whoever's really going through it, exchange it with me. So why would I not do that? I don't want my pain as a blanket of defense for me. I want God's wraparound protection that he gives to us that's what I want. So if you want that too, go through this process. It's very simple. It's not complex. You don't have to have the right words. But often the enemy is waiting. You know, the enemy can't read our minds. And the enemy is waiting for you to remain silent. The enemy is hoping that you don't know who you are in Christ. The enemy is hoping that you don't want to talk to God. Sometimes you got to talk to God before you can even open the Bible. So, you know, it, there's not a wrong way. And I think sometimes for fear of just not even knowing what to do, we shut down completely. And by the way, you're not going to feel like talking to God whenever you go through a massive loss. You're not going to feel like it. So this is a choice you make. This is not an emotion. It's a choice. I pray and hope that you are filled with the Holy Spirit, that God is living inside of you. Pray in the Spirit. If you don't know what to pray, pray in the Spirit. It is the most effective prayer. And often you will hear God speak through that. Okay, I, I never would have known to pray for that, God. You know, so don't limit yourself to what you can think up and imagine and figure out that you're limiting yourself and you're actually working out of your own intellect rather than moving in the spirit. 
And sometimes it's hard. You think you're moving in the spirit and it's like, actually, that's still your intellect. You know, so this is the whole point of spiritual oversight to also help you walk through it. Okay, so we're gonna ask God, hey, what are you saying about this situation? What do you say about this? We're going to give our grief to God. Jesus, I give my grief to you. This is too heavy for me. We're gonna feel our emotions. We're going to acknowledge them and then we're going to give them to Jesus. So you don't have to pretend like you're not feeling what you're feeling. There are going to be harsh and difficult moments. There are going to be days where you feel void of, sometimes you feel numb, you feel, um, you feel like despair like you just feel like this this is this is just never going to get better i mean you're not crazy and you're not a bad christian it doesn't mean you believe or have any less faith but th these are the ebbs and flows of being a human being this is i mean this is the truth so you have to give it to jesus make a point to stay in communication with god make a point to keep jesus at the center and then when you can you're going through that process when you can, read the word, okay? If it helps you to find the scriptures on grief and to read those and to take comfort in the fact that God does not leave you alone ever, he does not ever leave us alone in these situations. We are never alone. That's the truth. Joy will come. And I have asked God before, God, impart me with joy. Infuse me with joy and peace in Jesus' name. And it happens. Sometimes it's instant. Sometimes it's, it really is the next morning. Sometimes it's a little bit later, but it's when God wills it. And so have faith that God has got you. God has you. It's not that he doesn't care. Or he's not in the room or he forgot about it or he, you know, he was doing something else. No, he's omnipresent, omniscient. He knows what's in your heart anyway. So just give him access. I hope this has given you a clear path to approach Jesus, to approach God, to talk with the Holy Spirit. If you're going through grief, loss, anything that is incredibly difficult, I hope that this helps you with your communication with God, but also I hope it leads to your breakthrough. The truth is that you are not alone in this. And so my prayer for all of us is that we remember the truth, that God is with us always. He has not forgotten us, that joy really does come in the morning, and it's okay to feel our emotions. It's okay to acknowledge them. We're not gonna bury them deep and we're not going to feel them and then linger in them. We are going to feel them, express them, and give them back to Jesus because we were never meant to carry this burden, this pain on our own. I invite you to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok all under A Touch of Flourish. You can also go to my website, atouchofflourish.com, my blog where I'm writing about, really about grief, about grieving Levi. <laughs> if, I mean, it's definitely on topic. <laughs> so um, you can go and check that out. Remember to like this video and subscribe to have content sent directly to you. Thank you so much for sitting with me and talking about this and just being open to what God has to say about whatever it is you're going through. It really is courageous to begin that process. I know grief can be a touchy subject and it's hard. I know that it can also be something that you may not wanna talk about with others. So I really appreciate you stopping by and I hope that this helps you and blesses you. I'll see you next time. I hope you have a great day. Take care.